We're a couple weeks into our uh, preseason, as we talked about at Media Day last week. Um, we have a really, uh, I think, um, um, we have a really exciting opportunity coming up here uh, with, with playing Dayton in an exhibition game. Um, as some of you may know, uh, Anthony and his wife, Chris, they have a really uh, powerful story, a really personal, powerful story um, around mental health that they have, um, I think, just here recently begun to really uh, take uh, some time to share. And I give, give them a ton of credit for the courage it's taken to, uh, to share that personal story. Anthony called <clears throat> back in the summer and asked if we'd be uh, willing to play uh, an exhibition game. Uh, to start the season to really raise money uh, around mental health and mental health as it relates to, to teenagers and, and, um, and college age kids. And he said this will give um, myself, our family, and my wife Chris an opportunity to, to share our personal story. And uh, we really jumped in with two feet um, because I think it's, uh, it's a great opportunity to raise money, to raise awareness, uh, to also hopefully give... Um, give Anthony and his family some healing um, in, the, in the midst of this. So um, I'll let him uh, or, or you kind of uh, learn more about their personal story. Dayton's obviously a good team. There's, uh, there's history here, uh, recent history, uh, as recent as, as 2014 in the, in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Um, they're in Aaron's, Aaron's last game, uh, I believe, in Buffalo. Uh, and then the last time I believe we played there was in 1988. Um, so it's, it's been a minute since, since we've traveled and played there. The, the game will be very much an exhibition. Uh, game will play different rotations, different lineups. Um, you know, in football vernacular, it'll be, a, you know, it'll have a little bit of a spring game feel in terms of uh, trying different things, getting, giving different looks, uh, playing different rotations as we continue to tinker um, and prepare for our first game against Oakland. So uh, just a couple words on that. We're really excited about this group. They've been working extremely hard. I cannot wait to, uh, to get them um, on the court here on Sunday, but in particular to start the season um, against Oakland. So it's, uh, it's a really exciting uh, time for us right now as we get moving forward. All right, I'll take some questions. Uh, when you spoke with us at Big Ten Media Day last week, you said you had a couple guys still kind of banged up a little bit. Just what's the health of the team heading into this weekend? Yeah, no, no real updates on a Taysen still in in um, uh, going through his recovery uh, from his from his procedure, Adam, and that's still going to take a few weeks. Uh, there's no real update on his timeline. Uh, Austin Parks has returned to uh, practice. Um, he's beginning to do some full court work today. <clears throat> And then we've had some other bumps and bruises, but, but nothing of note, just normal preseason. You know, we're going long. We're hitting uh, pretty much every day right now. And, um, you know, that, that can beat up a body a little bit. So uh, we'll taper back as we get closer to, to real games. And what will be the benefit of playing a game at this part of the preseason that isn't behind closed doors, that is going to be, you know, warts and all is going to be out there for everyone to see? Yeah, no, I think in, in, in most cases, as you know, uh, the idea b behind this is closed scrimmage, uh, although those super se secret scrimmages are really not super secret anymore, as we all know. Um, somehow we've got some moles in our program because you guys always figure out what the scores are in those particular games, um, which is really fine. I, I couldn't care less. Uh, we do have a super, super secret scrimmage um, the following week uh, that many of you guys already know the, the opponent. Um, and that, that will be two real – I think we have really two early tests for our, for our, our, our team. And, again, you, you approach them very differently than you would a regular game. That's the reality. Um, but I think both of these teams – I believe Dayton's picked to win the A-10. Uh, they're coming off a 20-win season. And uh, the team we're scrimmaging is also picked to have a very good season. Chris. You talked about the benefits of, of this game. You've done these scrimmages before, going on the road, yeah. a place like Dayton, you said sell out. How much does that impact, you know, especially some of the young guys getting yeah. a chance to, to experience that, even though it will be still an exhibition? Yeah, I think it's great. I, I really think it's great because that, that'll be an environment that will mimic really what a Big Ten road environment will look like. 
and it's early, right? It's, it's October. Uh, you're throwing your group into that. Um, I think the reality is, is having some guys that have been through some, some high level environments, road environments, having those guys returning that are going to play important roles for us really helps. But there's no question that's going to be a different feel than what you normally experience in these closed doors, almost like a, a classroom setting is what a lot of these, you know, what these scrimmages are. And going on the road and doing it um, is, uh, I think, a real. I, we look at it as a great opportunity. Um, and uh, I think it's, again, we're looking at it as another practice, another opportunity to get better. But obviously, it's against someone else, which I know our guys are welcome. Hey, um, you know, the idea of having this opportunity to play to raise awareness for mental health is a cool chance for you to talk about what that means for your program, even though a lot of this is Dayton focused. Obviously, Coach Day has a, a big mental health initiative. What what priority in your program is mental health, the resources you have available to your players, and, and how do they take advantage of those? Well, as, as many of you know, the university and the athletic department really, I think, was ahead of the curve in making this a priority years ago. I think Gene led the way with that. Um, um, in terms of the staffing um, and the therapists and counselors uh, that are available in beginning the conversation years ago, um, I, I think that was, um, again, I think we were ahead of the curve, and certainly we have the resources to make that a priority. I think as far as a head coach's responsibility and our staff's responsibility, I think it's important to have open dialogue about, about um, what it looks like, you know, what mental health look like, looks like in what taking care of yourself looks like to normalize this whole process of young people going through uh, struggles that they go through. And when I had a chance to talk to Anthony, you know, I, I think he, um, he brought some great insight in, as it's such a personal story to him, uh, talking about, um, you know, his daughter and uh, what she went through and what she went through uh, during the years of the pandemic and some of uh, all the struggles that young people went through there. Um, so I, I think it's, um, you know, I think each uh, program and each staff here uh, that I'm in contact, I know I've talked to Ryan about it, take it very seriously. You know, I think it's true for young people, it's true for all of us sitting in this room that uh, it is really important to prioritize that. And on another note, I do think that one of the things I've learned as I've advanced in years here a little bit is um, I often feel like I'm in the best place with my self-care um, when I'm thinking about others and when my life is centered around helping others. And uh, I think it's always a good lesson for all of us. It's kind of hard to transition back to a basketball question after that, but I'm, I'm curious when you have a new team, you know, every year it has a little different feel to it. Can you give us a sense of what the maturity of this team feels like early in the year, their ability to grasp what you guys want to do? Yeah, good. Yeah, really good. I feel really good about it. Again, having some guys returning that played important roles, uh, like Bruce, Roddy, Felix, Zed, um, having some older guys, been really pleased with our, our three transfers that we added. Um, so I think it's been, you know, it's been really good. Obviously, obviously time will tell, but um, we've had some, some really good leadership. I think we have those sophomores that have taken another step as players and as people. And in Bruce's case, I think he's really uh, grown as a leader. Chris, on the mental health part, you have to be amazed and delighted with how far this pendulum has swung from when you were a player, maybe yeah. even at Gardner. Yes. I mean, would you have would you have benefited from this back in the day as a player? Or I mean, the stigma was there then. Yeah. It's not now. I mean, how far has this thing come? Yeah, I can't imagine going into my coach and um, asking him if I could see a therapist. That's how far we've come. You know, I, I just couldn't imagine doing it. And, um, or, or my trainer, you know, I just, uh, it just wasn't common. And uh, in some ways, and, and I never got this impression from him, but, I, you know, he, he, many of you know, I was super close to him. He's since passed, but it just, it was not normalized in any way. So um, I, I think that um, it's, it's come a really long way. And again, I give our athletic department a lot of credit for it. 
Um, but, you know, the reason this was so, I think we jumped at it, uh, and we've talked about, I know for seven years now here, I've gotten grief from Dayton fans about never never playing them, you know, um, and trust me, it's been pretty consistent. We have talked about playing in the past, and, and I'd be open to doing a home-and-home home, uh, with them at some point for sure, as we almost did a couple years ago. But this is so unique because it's so personal to Anthony and his family. And I think that's why I got tremendous respect for him. That's why we jumped at the opportunity. Basketball question. Sure. Um, last, last year we were watching Roddy. He's just kind of going along, yeah. going along. Boom. Late in the season, tournament, he just comes on. How important is something like that for a kid to really just come into this year like, like a 180 almost? Yeah, I think finishing like we did was important for, for everyone, um, but certainly for him with, with the way he played to get some confidence um, against good teams and to finish 5-2 and two down the stretch. He didn't really kind of hit his stride until uh, the last few games of the Big Ten tournament. We saw glimpses of it in practice. Um, now for him, I think he's got to take the next step as a player, and that is um, really a, you know how consistent is he going to be, and that's – what's sitting in front of him, the challenge, how consistent are you going to be? Um, for us to be good in what we believe we can be this year, Roddy has to take a real consistent step forward. Chris, you mentioned the transfers. One asked about Dale, uh, especially now Tays and now probably an important ball handler for you guys at the moment. Uh, probably will be a season anyway, but yeah. are you expecting him to be the kind of player he was at Baylor, or are you expecting even more scoring or want that from him this season? Oh, I anticipate him playing a bigger role <clears throat> than what he did at, at Baylor. Uh, Dale Bonner's been uh, – he's been really good for us. He gives us a speed uh, that we haven't had. Um, he's, he's the fastest player we've, we've coached here from end to end for sure. Um, he just has tremendous quickness and speed with the ball. Um, and he's a little bit slight in build, but uh, he's been able to really shoot the ball. Um, we're going to need him to play a bigger role. You know, he's playing behind a couple – couple NBA guys there at Baylor. Um, we're going to need him to play a bigger role, and I think he's ready for it. Hey, Chris, um, how do you fix the Ohio State run game? <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you'd ask that. Beyond that, last, uh, last year about this time we talked, and you, you had kind of hinted that you saw something really special with Bryce last summer. How do Scotty and Devin, you know, similarly ranked kids coming out of high school, High expectations. Yeah. How have you seen them adapt to to this level? What are you expecting from those guys? Yeah, I think Bryce had this natural ability to kind of get a bucket, uh, even when he was being challenged or closely guarded. Um, he was a tremendous isolation player. Um, those guys have different games. They have different strengths that they bring to the game right now. Um, you know, Scotty right now is probably of our freshmen not probably his, of our freshman ability to come in and, and impact on both ends. Um, but I, I think they all will have moments this year. I think the reality is, is if our team grows uh, like we expect it to, we may not need to rely on our freshman class as much as we did last year in terms of just throwing minutes their way, which I think is healthy for them and for our team. Um, I think Devin's shown real improvement here in the last – couple weeks in his uh, conditioning and his fitness but again I, I think that's a high bar um, just in terms of his Bryce's proficiency scoring to place on anybody but they have different strengths that they bring and certainly both of those guys will impact our team. You and, and, and Ryan Day like uh, it seems like there's been a little bit more sympathetico the podcast stuff that he was on you know over the summer you guys obviously as a program need the football program for recruiting visits now. How vital has this relationship been between the two programs in the last few years? Well, since I've been here, really. I mean, um, Urban was tremendous as soon as I got here. Um, we've since stayed in contact and uh, stayed in, in, in regular communication. Um, you know, I never forget him coming over. Uh, I think he was working in the office, came over during the Michigan State game when we, when we beat him there. But those guys have, um, you know, both of those guys have been great. You know, they've been, you know, our wives, uh, we, we, we have dinner together. We've built a friendship. I think there's a commonality in terms of, um, uh, you know, being at this place. And um, I, I think it's it's grown into a really, you know, beyond just a working 
uh, friendship. It's it's grown into a friendship. So big fan of him, big fan of his leadership, and uh, can't wait for this weekend. Hey, Coach. Uh, obviously, this is, the, this is the third season in a row where Dayton is sold out their regular season schedule. They love basketball down there at Dayton. Yeah. What kind of elements of their culture would you like to have emulate up here at Ohio State? Well, I love their, I love their, <coughs> I love their re- arena. <coughs> Excuse me. Love their arena. Love the size of it. Um, uh, and I, I love ours as well. I just think you know they they have a, a, a pretty compact place. Had the chance to to see it for a minute over the summer. Um, and we know for years, right? For decades, not years. For decades, that place has been really passionate. I think they have um, you know one of the great fan base basketball fan bases uh and most people who follow college basketball know that they have one of the great basketball fan bases in the country and uh, i'm really excited for our group to play in front of it um because it is a tremendous uh following so um you know kudos to them for doing that it's it's been that way for years now uh they're pretty consistent in that um as they always have been they love their basketball and that's part of the reason why the um the first four games have been there in the NCAA tournament had an exhibition again last year uh, against Chaminade, objectively a, a lower caliber team than, than Dayton. How important is it after a disappointing record last year to open your season against higher caliber teams like Dayton and the double secret scrimmage team? Well, as I mentioned, it's it's an opportunity for us to get a chance to see how we perform against a really good team, a team that's expected to uh, win their league and be an NCAA tournament team. I think that gives you great feedback. Again, it's not um, – it'll be it'll – be, Coach differently than a regular season game. Um, that's the reality of it. We'll look at different rotations, different lineups. We're not going to play guys as much as we would uh, when we open against against Oakland. Um, but it'll give us a really good test and information to take back. Hey, Chris. Um, simple question, maybe not a simple answer. What are you hoping to get out of this game? You mentioned different rotations and things, but on individual kind of guys and play in basketball, what are you hoping to get out of this? S- to see how our guys respond in the, in that element against um, against other uh, another good team uh, against the physicality that they're going to bring, they have a really good front line player. You know, it'd be great for us to see um, how our guys operate against against a really good uh, front line player as well as a talented guard. They got a couple preseason all league guys. So anytime you're going into this, you only look at it as a coach. And as a really positive thing, because you get all of this immediate feedback that you can take uh, take back. And um, in some cases, uh, if you're struggling or if a guy's struggling, you might leave him in there a little bit longer um, just for him to experience uh, and work through that a little bit. Uh, these these are the kind of environments where you, where you do that. I'm sure you've talked with the guys and they know the story and they know where you got what you guys are doing and why. How important is that at the beginning of the season for them to have those conversations with each other and begin that that bonding and building and getting to know each other on a different level? Well, I, I think um, that takes time, as you know, Whitney. That takes that takes time for for teams and for guys. We did a cool thing here a few weeks ago where we spent some time away from uh, campus, away from their phones, um, which was uh, really well received, as you might imagine, and. Um, it was a really good thing, but I think those kind of conversations, um, how personal those can be around mental health and maybe what a kid's struggling with, they take some time to develop, and I think I think we're getting there for sure. Yeah, Coach, uh, Felix Akpara, just uh, curious about him now three weeks in or so. Um, are you getting the sense that he's making that step to where he could be a 20-minute, 25-minute a game type player because – when he played those kind of minutes in the tournament last year, it felt like he was changing games and impacting games. Uh, yes. He was able to stay on the court. Yes. What, what do you like about him, I guess, if, if he's able to do that? A lot. Yeah, I like a lot about him. Just what you said. He impacts the game um, in, in a lot of ways. And uh, I think for us, he's going to need to be able to, to, to play uh, those kind of minutes consistently. Um, he is um, – you know, he's still his his offensive game is still evolving, and he's got to make sure he understands kind of who he is and what his strengths are. But his offensive game is growing and evolving. But um, when you're six eleven and you have you know almost a seven 
two and a half wingspan and you, you ha you're a relatively quick jumper and you're a good athlete and beyond that he's got a he's got a real intelligence he brings uh, to ball screen coverages to ball screen defense to reading actions to understanding um, how to play certain actions whether it's a wide pin down or a stagger or a STS or any type of action he's got a real feel for those things that um, I think is maybe a little bit uncommon for a young guy and um, I think that's helped him on that end. Just following up on Devin and Scotty, Bryce and Malachi kind of got thrown into the fire. It worked because, you know, they're one of them NBA players. So yep. Is there a benefit to having guys in front of Scotty and Devin where they don't necessarily have to get thrown out there from day one and they ask to do more? For sure. Um, in both cases, benefit for our team. Um, and benefit for, for them. Because if you remember back to Malachi, Malachi struggled up until January. Uh, struggled. He played like a typical freshman up until January. Um, and, and he benefited when we beat Duke here when they were number one in the country. It was everybody was focused on other guys, E.J. Liddell, Kyle Young, Zed Key. And he was able to benefit and slowly come along and then really hit his stride. I, I think uh, if you're going to have a good team, you have to be relying on your older returning guys at this level and then hope that your freshmen gradually come along. And um, uh, that was the case in Malachi. Bryce had some maybe bigger earlier moments in terms of scoring. Um, but I think in a perfect world, yeah, you have some guys that can kind of help bring them along. And at some point they hit their stride. And as we all know, Malachi, we turned things over to him late in games, the Indiana game here when we beat him. Uh, we kind of turned things over to him, and that's when you started to see him really come into his own. They don't have to do that, but if they had to, could they? Well, that remains to be seen. Yeah, I don't. I think that's it's it's too early to tell. Um, and I think again, that's a lot to put on them. Um, I want them just to play to their strengths right now. Um, I think that remains to be seen. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, when you're looking at how this lineup could be constructed, there's a lot of different options you guys have, especially, you know, in the front court. Just, I guess, how much experimenting, obviously there's going to be plenty of it against Dayton, but how much do you keep the starters out there and guys that, are, you know, you see as big-time contributors for this season and kind of move them around as opposed to playing younger guys? Yeah, I think there'll be more mixing up than, than what there will be in, in the Oakland game in, in the start of the season. Uh, I think there'll be more changing of lineups. Who we start in this particular game may not be who we start in two weeks. Um, very well could change. That's not that's not decided yet. We still have a number of practices. We have uh, two two exhibitions. So uh, there'll be a lot a lot of tweaking and moving around. So a few minutes ago I heard you talking about hitting. Is that what you said? Yeah. Or, or is that kind of because you're in the woody you're talking about? Yeah, that? partly. Or, um, Partly that, play. You know, you I see, always consider myself a football guy, so I was going to answer the, uh, the running question. There. I don't know if you're putting on pads or, yeah. you know, you, you see video over the years of guys whacking dudes. In the Clay, game. I was an assistant wide receiver coach uh, to start my coaching career, by the way. Well, let's hear more about No, we that. should not hear more about that. <laughs> we should definitely not hear more about that. It was a short stint. Okay, so hitting entails what? So when I say hitting um, – yeah, it's a good question. It's a fair question. Uh, I think as you right now, when you when you when we're saying hitting, uh, it's a lot of scrimmaging. It's body on body contact. It's it's really a physical practice. Uh, so you have bumps and bruises, and um, you know we've got guys that are that are banged up in that area. That was I think I, I mentioned that when I was asking about the injuries. So we have guys that are banged up because they've got bumps and bruises because of the constant hitting that's going on right now. You know, yesterday we went for about two forty. Um, that's longer than what we're going to go in season. And a, a large part of that was hitting. But that's good prep, right? Sure. I mean, you know, I think that's needed. Uh, coaches vary on that. Um, some coaches um, might worry about injuries or just say, hey, it's October. Why are we hitting this much? This much? It's a really wide um, uh, variety of people in terms of philosophies on what they want to do this time of year in terms of length and the number of minutes they're hitting. All that stuff gets evaluated and talked about in the preseason, but uh, we, we're doing a fair amount right now. No whistles allowed there, right? No, no, no out of bounds, no whistles. I asked Felix a couple weeks ago what a good number of minutes was for him. He said 20 a game. Sounds like you're on board with that. 
Is that is that what you're plotting out? And is logistically that possible? That he would play 20 minutes? Yeah, with Zed and everything like that. Are you confident that you can get that? We'll play the best players the lo the most minutes. Appreciate the question. Yeah, that's that's what you know. Those guys will battle it out. Best player will play the most minutes. Anything um, else? Yeah. You uh, you mentioned that the possibility of a home and home against Dayton. Yeah. Uh, how how likely is that to happen? What are the upsides? What are the downsides? Well, I you know I think it's I think it's got real possibilities. Um, as you guys know, I've not shied away from playing people in state. Um, by any stretch, we we did a Cincinnati home and home. Um, so. Uh, we'll certainly consider doing it again um, with with Dayton if it works out. Um, as you guys know, I think it's not quite like football where schedules are out, you know, maybe five years in advance, but it's a couple years in advance. But, uh, yeah, we would like to, uh, you know, my philosophy on, on home and homes is just we really want to play good uh, tourn tournament-type teams in non-conference uh, games. That's what we want. That's what we typically have scheduled, and they're certainly – uh, in that category for sure. All right, thanks, guys.